give it to you, Eric. Thank you, Nardos. Hi, folks. I'm Eric Rojas, um, and we are Parsons TKO. Uh, we help mission-driven organizations provide better outreach, help them find ways to improve their audience engagement. I'm based here in Washington, DC. It's a nice spring day. Um, I've had the chance to work with a lovely group of clients, including think tanks, trade associations, advocacy organizations, institutes, institutions of higher learning, uh, also in my own, own uh, career experience here in the DC area and across the East Coast. Um, uh, th throughout my career as well, you know, I've had the opportunity to work on another on a number of email systems, including these selection processes, right? These steps you take to choose and and then uh, migrate to and 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 pick and and enact these new systems that really uh, elevate your your staff and your engagement strategies. So, we're here today to talk about one of my favorite topics, and this is the intangibles of vendor selection, finding an email system that works for you. Uh, vendor selection is focused on email right here in this case, but can really be applied to a number of different uh, engagement platforms. So I'm gonna start with a few kind of definition of terms here, because I like to make sure that we're speaking about the same terms and, and language here. But what do we mean by a vendor, right? So this is the company that provides a platform or service, which is critical to your organization's engagement goals. Um, I like to focus on email here, right? But um, but this is, uh, and especially in this case, but this could apply to also social media platform, digital asset management, uh, content management system, you know, behind the, the architecture behind your website, or a CRM, that single source of truth that um, where your data lies. Um, what do we mean by engagement platforms? Engagement platforms allow for mass communication and segmentation over different channels. And they can be leveraged by highly skilled staff uh, and resources, right, to elevate your mission's uh, engagement strategies. So today we'll be talking about how to use this selection process, how to create one, how to go through it, um, and prepare your organization for that moment of change, and to look and find that right fit goal, uh, right fit for your goals and needs. Um, there's not a one size fits all approach, of course. Everybody is unique, and, and things need to be tailored to your needs. But we hope to provide this as some kind of guidance for your for your journey. So you're here today probably because you're looking to reassess, right? Here's a few signs that you are probably or what you're thinking of um, when you're when your these feelings come up, right? You could be falling behind your competitors and um, you aren't really able to compete at the same level. Um, your audience expects a little more and your fundraising channels are underperforming a bit and your teams are mired in this busy work and just too busy to get things out the door or are busy getting things out the door and have, don't have time for anything else. Sometimes these platforms and processes are getting in the way of the work being done that you need to get to that next stage. Um, there might be an internal lack of ownership um, over that platform or channel which causes uh, an ad hoc approach, a decentralized approach. Sometimes this is a great strategy or a model for working, but if it's not working for you now, you may need to reassess. Um, sometimes these things are all, you know, you just don't know what it is, right? These are also an intangible things, things that you can't really grasp, right? Um, people are unhappy, uh, you're at your limits, you try everything else, trust that gut, right? If something's off, like you need to feel out and suss out how to, how to solve that. But you've recognized that you are at a moment of change and congratulations, right? This is that choice that, that is critical to that next stage, but have, have fun with it, right? All will be in service of your organization's mission. You'll need to put together that team and it's helpful to have that, um, you know, the colleagues that you trust to get there, right? But make sure they will give thoughtful, honest feedback, right? People that you can, can count on to provide their insights and, and, and a knowledge about how your organization works and how it needs to work to get to the next place. A change is disruptive, right? But if you plan ahead and prepare that way for it, it will be more impactful and well received. So take that feedback, right? Work with your colleagues and make sure it's part of that process. Uh, use that, you know, use that selection process that's having for organization. Um, use it for your for your organization, for your teams, and don't forget, like listen to your your audience as well. Um, use this feedback. Use this this back and forth, it's the voices and aspirations, right? Um, as part of your selection process to, to help also determine, right? The formality, informality, goals, right? These are all intrinsic parts of your in, develops and later stages of your engagement ecosystem. If you can't access some of these, right? If you don't have the kind of audience data you need to get there, especially, especially right at the audience level, which you might not have that insight, um, use archetypes or contact models 
to gain insight into your audience. You know, who are these people who are opening or interacting with your website? Um, what issue areas do they care the most about? What's the history of their interactions with your, with your organization? All of these shape how they will interact and utilize and, and, and commit to your, to your mission. Um, your staff is also very critical here too, right? They also include your product champions, but those, those are the people who really, really know the existing platforms in place, right? And the systems in place. But um, you know, also use the people who use it casually. They have also an investment in this, in this product, in this platform, in this system that you're thinking about. So all of these are sounding boards for your progress. Um, learn about why people care about these things. Um, you know, that's, it's critical to understand those, those motivations. And listen to yourself too, right? Engage in self-reflection to understand your own motivations and goals. And all of these interactions, producing them, creating stories out of them, tracking them are again, intrinsic to your ecosystem. To engage with your audience successfully, your systems need to talk to each other and to be adequately connected. They need to speak to each other to provide timely updates in order to be more engaged, more engaged to allow you to create more engaging and personalized content. These touch points, such as like, uh, and this is a great di diagram here, right? Um, we're mapping sort of the, the concept of, of, of personalized content and the platforms that touch these different pieces that come together to create and power that work. These do not exist on one platform alone, right? So, so having those threads and having those touch points that allow you to uh, provide that personalized, uh, impactful, meaningful engagement pieces in, in your products really help increase and make your audience feels like, oh, they are listening to me. And this is content that, that resonates with me. These touch points elevate your audience engagement. And this is uh, the, our, con our company concept of, of, and philosophy of, of engagement architecture, right? Providing this holistic approach to how the systems of engagement work together to successfully communicate your vision of your mission, right? And you need a, a framework and a way to visualize it, to communicate it, um, and also to track how these different people and systems uh, work together. And this helps you build those connections, and strengthen them. You can see them, right? Tracking these is critical. So these allow you to see those connections between people, the strategies, the processes, the platforms, and provide an understanding to how to their scope, how, how wide this goes, right? Each channel and platform touches all other parts at play in some way and provides this structure. For example, you might want to identify your email segments based off these intersections, which can have large impacts on your website traffic, the design and branding of your products, um, and even the, the tactics and strategies you use to deliver them. You might even have multiple redundant email systems in place, right, that complement each other or replicate each other. Um, understanding how they interact and how they play to get how they interplay is key to finding out where you're going to go um, and how your systems in place operate. Um, engagement architecture provides that visibility into how these connections are built and to understand how they are connected. And this plays out in your selection process, which really can elevate your team's abilities right in this critical moment of change. Um, with the team you put together to, to move through uh, a, a selection, um, the individuals you train, the processes you create, um, you actually create a, a sense of community as, as this grows, right? Beyond the integration of just software, we're talking about you know, the integration of people with the software and the platform, uh, the way people use the tool um, to unlock their potential. It provides the opportunity to gain new skills, encouraging growth that will further uh, your colleagues' professional development. It's, it's good for them to learn these skills too, and your organization. They may become casual experts in a new channel, um, and this opens a new path for you and, and your organization and your mission, right? Finally, it allows you to exchange ideas among your staff, sharing skills, promoting transparency. You can back this up all with concrete data if you can track it um, and know where it's getting tracked, right? This helps provide motivation for iterative development. Um, provide like proving your past successes and finding out what will work in the future to take you to the next stage. And remember, the selection process here is only just one part of, of the, the whole piece, right? Um, it's one part of this process. It's a thing that gets you to that next part of your 
digital transformation in your organization. All of those other critical uh, pieces around it are, are important in that journey. But it, again, it unlocks that potential of your staff and their ability to connect. Um, but change, remember, is cohesive here. So you need to support all the different intricate parts of it. You've, we can go, we're going to go into this in further detail, but we want to think about that ability to make that change. Um, one thing we say here at Parsons TKO is, is that people want to be disruptors. You know, that disruptive disruption is disruptive. Um, you need to accept that it's going to be disruptive and it's going to get you closer to where you need to go, but you have to be prepared for where that's going to take you. So where do you start on this, right? Um, you need to know your limits, what your mandate is. Um, you have a mandate to only go so far, usually in this process, right? But that scope is still very wide. It's a lot of transformative change about to happen. Um, there's a pretty wide sea here, right, of, 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 uh, of choice ahead of you. And there's a lot of waves and crests and they're full of mystery. And these are those intangibles, right? You don't know where they're gonna pop up, but you still need to find and be prepared to safely plan around them. So generally, the, the first thing to do when you don't know what's next, right, is start mapping out what you need to do. And part of that is making your plan. So we'll be, again, drilling down just into that selection process today. But these are the different phases and stages of the kind of uh, process that we've been using in the past to onboard clients to new vendors and platforms. Um, I'm going to group these into a few different uh, sub phases, right? But the green uh, marks the top, the green words the top, right? These are the different phases of uh, and stages of, of uh, that, that collect under, uh, underneath, right? So we have an exploration phase where we look at internal, existing internal platforms, right? What's in place now? What do people use? Um, what technologies are used? And how are, you know, how are people using them? The processes, right? That is the uh, workflows internally the integrations in place, um, what steps are taken to, to uh, unlock and, and to use these tools. Skills, things like, you know, what, what skills are in play from the people who are using these systems? Um, are, they, are they content creators? Are they writers, right? Are they editors? Are they email developers? Are they, are they event coordinators, right? What, you know, their motivations and what their skill set brings to the way they do their work. And the people themselves, again, part of that, right? Um, though they bring themselves to this, this platform and the way they see how they're going to use it. And your solution needs to speak to that. So determine what's in place and then what part of it you're going to change. Um, again, this could be you might have um, a few different systems in place that support one need, and you might need to combine those. Or maybe you have a very specific tool for um, for one specific audience, right? Um, this could be a, a an advocacy group, or um, or perhaps you know it's a staff member actually that likes to use something for, because they prefer it. Finding ways to get buy-in, right, um, among your intern, with these st the staff internally, their skills, and where those intersections lie. Uh, then the selection process itself will go right into that, but this is the actual process of making the selection what to expect, how to plan ahead, how to keep your stakeholders in the loop. Um, you may already have right that one platform place, um, but if you can consolidate it, or if you, have, if you have multiple ones, you can consolidate. If not, that's okay. Um, determine where your guardrails are and what you need to re replace exactly. Um, you'll do this right at, in this when you select that new, new, um, new platform. Um, implementation um, includes that push and pull of data on design in designing how that new system will work. This in also includes the actual configuration of the system at a technical level, right? The, the, uh, the new campaigns, the landing pages, the user accounts, the roles, the data fields, filters, automated campaigns, or automated systems that, that control and maintain your uh, deliverability, your roles, your statuses. Um, these need to be activated and also maintained. If you add new layers to them or someone does something um, without considering them in the future, you might have something that breaks. So being able to watch out for those as well um, or preparing for that or building a system that isn't going to fall apart. Um, adoption here means that incorporating that onboarding phase, right? Getting your team into the new platform and then making sure they continue to use it well. Um, this is managed 
uh, generally the first part, the training um, by the vendor um, at first, right? But then they just let you go, right? And then you need to have your own internal phase of training and to determine how actually to onboard new people, right? And offload them when, um, when they are in a place where they need to move to the next phase. Um, but these ongoing training parts, right? Um, and governance parts are on you. And the governance, right, is organizing your team, um, providing naming convention structures to keep your team organized. So that way you can stay aligned, stay organized and provide again for continuity. Um, if someone needs to hand off a product to someone else because they can't complete the work for whatever, you know, for, for whatever reason, someone needs to be able to pick up the pick that up and keep moving. So finding a system and building a system that allows for that. Um, and this is really the hardest part of the process here too. Um, it requires that buy-in from teams and that ongoing uh, ability to, to uh, get, you know, who are people who are just trying to get work done, right? So you, you need to instill your goals and, and, and skills and, and this governance model into the process um, as we adapt to those changes and the needs of, of your colleague. Um, we have a question here, uh, and I'll just, it's like actually a good time for it so I can drop this in. Um, how do you advocate for a new email system when your leaders are hesitant? So if, uh, if you're using something that, that you, you as a team or you as an individual have identified as, um, as no longer meeting your needs, right? A, a say, is get, that, get that attention, right? Um, do drop that. To your, to your leadership, to people who stakeholders who can make or instill that change. Um, talk to your, look at your data, right? And or lack of data and point to that as a reason for why uh, you may need something different. Um, if you don't have benchmarks or any kind of access to a KPI, this is a glaring gap in, in your data ecosystem, your analytics ecosystem. Um, you need to know how well you're doing. And if you can't tell anyone how well you're doing, um, your leaders should be able to, to, that should resonate very well. Um, look at your competitors too, and even, uh, or competitors or like-minded organizations, right? Who support similar causes, see what they use and see what they are providing and see if, you know, you can rest replicate that in your current system. If you can't, you might be, in, they might have a good use case, right? For what, what you can provide to say, hey, well, we can't do this with this software, right? With this the platform, it's too dated, um, or it doesn't have the complexity to do, you know, or we're running against um, organizationally, right? Let's say if you're growing and you have more staff entering in the system and the system you have in place can't support the growth of your organization, that is a very compelling and resonant reason to, to use a new tool. So um, keep those in mind and, and, uh, and good luck. So now we're diving in directly into that selection process itself. Um, your plan may look something like this, right? And it needs to be unique to your organization. Again, there's no one size fits all solution here, but make sure you have a team of, you know, and, and uh, colleagues of, uh, who are like-minded, right? And, and, and support you, um, but make sure you have clear understanding of the resources that you need to get there. So that may be that team, um, might be leadership and stakeholders, right? Or it is certainly they need their support to get through this, um, but you need that support to be able to advocate for that change and encourage that this is the adoption of this down the line. So first off in our, in our uh, plan here is to do that environmental scan, right? Um, to review what the landscape looks like. Are you looking for a large scale solution um, that provides a one size fits all approach or do you have very specific needs that need to be fulfilled um, and these are these are clearly are these clearly defined um, or you know or do you not have those right do you need something that's flexible that allows you to adapt if you do a lot of different things and a lot of different goals you need something that can provide for that so ensure that you are accommodating for that and and, and when you're looking for different software out there and so you know do your research across the web make phone calls start laying the groundwork for building those relationships with these different vendors down the line. Um, call colleagues, call someone you used to work with who's moved on, call someone cold call, whatever, right? Like do that background scan, do networking um, to ensure you know the landscape. Um, if And you know, that you might have the right vendors from choose from. Um, if you don't okay, go with any of these people that you call, that's okay, you've made a new connection. Um, talk to people and build that group so that way you can have whatever you need. 
um, to make an informed decision. So then determine what your selection process will look like, right? Do you need a formal RFP? Do you need something approximating it? Are you providing all of the research and materials to your stakeholders and providing, providing them with a solution? Or are you making that decision yourself? Um, ensure you're performing your own due diligence, right? To make sure that you have a fair assessment of parties. Um, that very important for, for more uh, federal or, or very restricted, more, um, you know, bound processes, right? Make sure that there is diligence in the process if you need to have that. If you'd like to say platform agnostic, uh, as we do, uh, ensure that you're viewing the, the landscape as broadly as possible. Um, that way you can keep your options open, um, especially when you need to be flexible to the needs of different internal uh, uh, client, uh, 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 users, right? If you have a few different staff that you're using one tool and you need another one, um, and you have to have an ecosystem that supports multiple uh, emails, right? You, you cannot just sign with one, right? So ally, uh, make sure you're aligned and have those uh, in place. Um, and it's part of, again, part of your process too. You might need a separate tool for a very specific need. So make sure that you are, can be flexible. Um, if you have a favorite at first, right? Something really calls to you. Um, that's good, you know, um, there might be a reason why you're looking at it a little closely, um, but still, you know, be cautious, right? Make sure to double check your, your own work um, and that you are sure that you're liking something for the right reason. So this kind of gets into that, that next phase, right? What are your requirements? What do you need as an organization to succeed um, and, and to have at least the base level or that stretch goal for yourselves? Um, do you need uh, criteria, right, that you can use to, to uh, or put together criteria that you can use to define what those needs are and how well each of these platforms fills, fulfills those goals. Um, do you need something that many platforms and you, or many other platforms interact with and users can need to be on, right? Do you have lots of staff or do you have just um, one or two staff members who run the system for you? Your model for how you operate is really important to how you will use the tool. So determine these requirements from a you know, personnel technical perspective, and then how will that vendor support that, right? Is it a tool that will keep you organized that will allow for the handoff we, we talked about earlier, right? Or for different ways pe that people work to be supported in this. Um, again, does it integrate with your other systems? Does it, does it have an open API that talks to your CRM and analytics platforms that allow for uh, the tracking Right, and that benchmarking and, and, and benchmarking across channels. Um, so that way, if you can integrate a, a fundraising piece or, or um, have it talk with Google Analytics to ensure that user journey is, is visible. Um, if those are needs that you want to fulfill, make sure that's part of your process. Um, you may need some sort of grand matrix, right? To keep track of this criteria um, and then qualify it on your own or you know have, have ways to evaluate it um, so you can see it, you know, it rolled up in, in this research that you've done, um, a way to evaluate it. And that's also comprehensible, right, by, by your colleagues to build it together. So that way um, you can deliver something that is, that, that, uh, that clearly shows your, your direction and where your thoughts are, are going. So from, from that stage, you can get down to your short list, right? Take out ones that don't meet your qualifications at all. If something you, you have here as uh, you've done a little bit of background research and it's very clear this platform doesn't operate well with another and it's really critical to your success, pull it out. Um, you know, make sure that you have things that are that are uh, that talk that speak to each other that are compatible. Now that you're able to identify this shortlist, you can do that additional deep dive research and schedule demonstrations, right, to get your teams to look at what they will be using. Identify those use cases, right? Those those steps you take to create work, uh, to do your work, and to do get your jobs done, um, and apply them in these demonstrations. Ask and and uh, you know qu make sure to ask those questions. That hey, I have a very type specific type of report that this stakeholder needs um, to to be able to uh, justify something. You know, as part of a as part of this uh, system, right? Um, if they can't do that, then and maybe they can include a feature to get you there. But if they 
can't provide that, then that's clearly not a, a good direction to go. Um, you need to be sure that your skills and needs can be adapted to this new platform or right or enhanced by this new platform. Um, not just, uh, it, it's not always a showstopper, right? It, it can be, um, if it's something that can be changed or is flexible enough to meet your needs in the future, um, use that as an aspiration. And now once you've done assessing, uh, you can make your internal recommendations for that new vendor. Uh, prepare this top list, right, and your preferred recommendations and deliver it um, to your team, your stakeholders, and see which one is most apparent, which one is starting to, to rise, um, and see if those vendors can accommodate any missing needs. Again, if they're willing to work with you to, to add the features or, or uh, modules in, in your platform that are missing from your, from your, in your gap assessment here, Take a look and ensure that um, that they can deliver. Um, and again, talk with uh, the your colleagues, your network, um, other clients of theirs. Right, have them able to deliver. Ensure that you can get a product that meets what you need it to do and where you want to go. And now, final phase, right? The decision itself. Um, you know, see if, again, see if your vendors can accommodate these needs. If they want to work with you, you know, they will help, they will try to get you there. You may need to pivot at this point, uh, depending on the factors that change, things do to happen, right? Or what's about to happen. So now that you've scoped out and how this will go, um, you know, but again, now we need to start preparing for, for what, how to adapt, talk or how to speak to that change when it happens and when you have new information. So. These are the beginning of, of the intangible pieces of, uh, of that process that, that we've identified. Um, this could be that cultural fit. Do you see yourself and your teams using this platform, working with this vendor, providing services to your team? Do your values align? Are you there with them, right? Are they there with you? If this is important to your team and your organization, now's the time to include that. Um, do they support the causes that are similar to yours and your competitor or completely different? Um, are their customers similar to yours, or are you an outlier? Do you have some, do you share goals, um, or are they different? Or they look at you with a different, different uh, under a different glass, right? Um, these are important to determining how your relationship will play out, right? Um, especially when you have, um, you know, uh, if if you want to succeed with them, right? They need to work with you and share your and share your ideas. And we talked about this a bit before, but right, does that platform provide the features you need um, upfront or can they accommodate and add them in the future? Or can they use the existing pieces they have in place to accommodate them? Will they work with you to implement those changes? Will they ignore you? Um, it's important, if this is important or not to you, you need to identify that as well, right? If you're okay with just making do with what you have and you're still wowed by what, by what you have, um, then that's sufficient. Um, does this feature uh, or solution enhance what you do currently? Um, if you have a specific email system in place for a very specific audience and it's not worth replacing, right? You may not need to replace it, but you should find a way to incorporate it into your ecosystem as part of your integration plan. You know, does that solution, again, does that solution meet your needs or elevate um, your existing needs? Uh, another question coming in here. Um, where do you suggest we start if you want to make the most of the email system you currently have? It's a very good question, right? So if you want to optimize what, where you're at now, I think you need to a, identify where, you're, where you're, you're, you're lacking, right? Identify what features you want to see uh, or improve upon. Um, if you have an email product owner internally, this is a great uh, source of, of the, the who can help, resource for who can help you unlock that. If you do not, you might need to go to support or, or your technical staff, right? Um, or whoever in your organization is, 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 owner and is uh, owning this, this product. Um, if they can't solve it, right, you need to go maybe to an outside uh, consultant or, or, or start looking at what could replace it or look at a third party tool that might be layered on top of it. So start looking at all the options in that, in that case, um, or if you need help, right, you can, uh, reach out to, to uh, an outside resource. So this isn't exactly an intangible, but you can't really talk about 
selection or or a new, pro new vendor product, right? A new, uh, new uh, signing on a new vendor without those costs um, and the and your budget. Is this within your scope, right? What factors influence that cost, and how will this scale up, um, given your potential for growth and expansion as a team? Even with your skills, right? If you need new features that need to be added on top of this in the future, and that costs more, you need to factor that into your decision. If they have more features in the future, and you know, will these be ad hoc costs again, or will they be added to your package? Who decides that? Um, you, these are all part of your selection process. Um, how often do they implement these new features? Will they be supported, or will they cost extra? Will they add these to your bundle? What can be discounted, right? Some give nonprofits discounts, so make sure to ask these up front, and um, be, and that way you have a definitive uh, result of up to how much this will cost you. Um, look at also right what your back back to the growth angle too, you know, database size is usually a, a very cost the the oriented uh, the, the, the one of the key things that determines the cost of these systems. Um, so make sure that's you have your wiggle room for yourself to grow, um, but also not too much. So you're overpaying for empty space. A lot of systems will provide the ability to uh, clean up your database along the way. So keep that in mind that you might not have that exponential growth that you're looking for. Uh, we have another question here. As we talk about features, what type of reporting should communication teams be looking for in an email platform? So reporting, uh, I, I would say there's two different lenses to look at here. Um, one is that you want that wide scale scope, right? That you want your benchmarks of, of what's going out. And that would be your uh, kind of critical email, in this case, KPIs. Um, at an engagement level, we would look at, right, um, your volume, you know, how much is going out and then what, how people are engaging with it. So those are the more, more nuanced KPIs that are relevant to your different systems. In the email world, um, you would look at how many of those emails are being delivered and how many are opened, how many are clicked, um, what is your click to open ratio, right? Um, and then determining what the benchmarks are for each type of product you send out. If you send out a lot of fundraising messages um, and you have an additional conversion rate layer on that, you need to capture that as well. But you might have a specific type of fundraising message you send out to a specific audience if you're doing, say, membership renewals, or if you're doing a out of season ask, right? Um, if you're doing um, a newsletter, you might have different content that resonates differently with different audiences. So these are the increasingly nuanced views you can get into um, at reporting at the reporting level. But each are you know have their weight to two different teams, and you need to evaluate internally which um, which you can uh, support and what you should provide. Um, reporting is a, an option that many of these email vendors do provide out of the box, but the more nuanced version, more nuanced and, and more intricate you get, you need a more customizable solution. So you may have to look outside of the vendor for itself to have that access, but at least you could get, if you can at least get access to the data itself and export it. Um, so again, that's having that open API that you can then feed that data to another uh, another analytics platform that can manage that data for you that will help you unlock your next stage of, of reporting development. So another part of this decision process again is, um, is the reflection, right? Looking at yourself and watching how you respond to each vendor's pitch, um, how your colleagues do. Look at their marketing and how colleagues and like-minded organizations respond to these organizations. Um, speak with your colleagues in your community. Um, you want to see how your reaction, how you are perceiving your reactions, right? But also how your group is. If someone else interpreted something differently, that's a very valid piece of this process, right? So knowing how those differences align or don't align will inform your decision. Use whatever you can to learn more and add it to your resources. Um, implementation, right? How will you be onboarded to the system? Is this part of your package or are you on your own? 
Um, how will you be staffed after, right? Do you have a product owner? Do you need more than one product owner? Or do you need a team of owners? Is this op operation so complex that you need multiple people in it? Um, that model and that structure is also very important to not just the selection, but your your adoption, right? And your and how you can unlock at the potential of this and of your teams and your tool. Um, and again, what kind of what will be changed in the future? Um, do you still have that in place? Will you still have that in place? Um, how will you govern this platform and the channel itself? Um, I like to think of these in, in two different your models for email or even platform development and, and use as, as a decentralized or, or centralized model to you. Decentralized would be having many people involved in the process. Everyone sends out emails separately. Um, this has the um, benefit of scale, right? If there are dozens of people building emails in your system, that's great. You can do so much more, but are they talking to each other? Are they ensuring that many people uh, that you're that reports are accurate. This is all very critical, right? But but if they're not talking, everything can break. So make sure that there is that structure in there. If you have a more centralized structure, that might and just say one or two people operating the platform and they're the only people that creates a bottleneck. So make sure you're either prepared for that or um, or you need to scale out, right? Another question here from uh, in the chat: Have you found in your experience that vendors offer onboarding and training of their system that, that offer onboarding or excuse me offer onboarding and training of their system is a good use of my organization's budget? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, and anything you can do to unlock that potential to to get that additional um, abilities communicated to your teams is, is a great option if you can support it um if, if you can if it fits in your budget of course however i believe the investment will be will pay off in in uh in the in the result of the work itself um, you may also want to look at outside resources that that have um the skill set too that can train as well um but training is certainly a useful especially a part of this especially when it's a new tool um you do not want to be in a situation where you have a new platform and no one knows how to use it. Um, that is a difficult place, right? And uh, and if if you can provide that bench uh, level support to everyone, um, you can at least start to identify those who are catching on or are getting onto the platform faster, and those become your platform champions, your power users, who can then train your colleagues as well. And again, that's that community that you're building of training of knowledge, of idea trend, idea exchange. So things in service of that, I think, are, are worthwhile. And this, this kind of gets to that, little, that continued support as well, right? Um, what does continued support look like? Do your vendors um, provide that down the line? Are they going to maintain that level of support in the future? What is that cadence of of check-ins, checkpoints, uh, stage, and 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 uh, your your uh, development, your maturity in the platform look like? Do they have that model for maturity? These are all important parts of them understanding you as a as a customer and as as an organization and as people too, right? Um, do you have that internal product owner um, and or ownership team that? that is uh, staffed for that, right? Um, do, are they staffed to be successful? Um, and do you, or do you have an easy enough tool that doesn't require that, right? Do you need more than one person in there? Kind of what we're talking about with that more decentralized model. Um, think of that staffing model and how it plays out with your support from your vendor. Um, down the line, you know, your vendor should be en enhancing and adding features to this platform. It should not be staying in place, um, especially if they need to keep up with the competition as well, right? Um, your product owner will help add those features in. So are these updates meaningful to you? Do you need them or do you just want to send the same thing out? Um, if that's what you need to do to get the job done, then that's, then that's okay. But if you want to enhance and continually optimize your work, you need to get to that next place. Um, these will only uh, make your engagement strategies, well, more powerful, right? But also allow your audience to, to really, really engage and resonate with your work.
So as part of this process, right, this decision process, you are building an internal community in your organization. They will help you make that selection uh, together, right, and use leadership, use your colleagues, use their experiences to help you decide what's best for your next move um, based off the work that you've done so far. You know, but what else, like what else can you accomplish together? You've already created this really unique community um, that rarely happens in organizations, right? This is a unique moment of change. So you've used your voices, right? Um, you've made your selection. Now see what you can unlock together. So, right, if you were already here, if you're here and, and watching this, you were thinking about this process. Um, so what do you do with this, right? Determine your needs, see what you really need. Do you need to optimize your platform um, as we talked about earlier, right? Or find something new. If you're lost, let us know. We can help you decide that. Do your research, right? Find an expert in the field who knows it and can help you make those informed decisions. Create a process for that change. That way you can build out your, your plan for how you will enact it. Reframe or adjust that change when it happens. Change is part of the process and it comes up all the time, right? Be prepared to move or pivot. Uh, make sure you know you have that time and attention devoted to this very complex phase that's about to happen, right? Uh, make sure you have your community of like-minded staff on, on this journey with you. It will help you hold you accountable and also ensure that diligence to your stakeholders. And then challenge yourself, right? This is new territory. You're learning something new. And that's a great thing. So is this where the journey ends, right? This process is up to you. It's, it is you, you are the process, right? Um, that's what this thing is. It, it is. it is you as a team and your, you as individuals um, unlocking and elevating your staff, unblocking your staff and listening to your audience. It's making the choice to unlock your team's potential and creating something very unique. Um, so now that you've done all this deliberate work, very deliberate hard work, um, there's even more harder work to come, which is enacting the, the soft the platform and the products that you need on it as well, and doing those products and, and really resonating or causing that resonance with your audience. So go and make something uniquely yours. Um, I leave it to you and your colleagues and can't wait to see what you do. So this is, this is uh, our, you know, if you need any help with this process too, um, you're welcome to reach out to us. Um, Parsons TKO provides uh, an email capabilities assessment uh, uh, product um, and, 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 uh, and process that can help you decide whether you need to optimize your existing platform or begin the process of replacing and selecting your next vendor. Uh, we can scale up as needed, so give us a call if you need to scope out your needs. And thank you.